Okay, so welcome to this video by the ACLS Certification Institute, found at www.aclscertification.com. And we're going to continue our discussion on the medications that we use in pediatric advanced life support. And in the last video, we finished off with epinephrine, and you know we're going through these in alphabetical order. So the next medication we're going to talk about is glucose. And glucose is important to keep in mind because infants have a very high glucose requirement and they have very low stores so it's very easy for them to become hypoglycemic especially in stressful situations like during an arrest so it's important to check the concentrations to do a blood glucose check and so the dose of glucose is going to be 0 0.5 to 1 gram per kilo given IV or IO now there's an easier way that I use to remember that and that's called the rule 50s and what that says is that uh, you're going to give a different dose based on whether they're newborns, infants, or adolescents. And the, the amount you give times the concentration you give is going to multiply to be 50. See, 5 times 10 is 50, 2 times 25 is 15, and 1 times 50 is 50. So in newborns, you give 5 mLs per kg of D10 water. Infants and kids, 2 mLs per kg of D25 water. And in adolescence, it's 1 ml per kg of D50 water. So let's go to the next medication, which is lidocaine. And lidocaine uh, works by decreasing arrhythmias. It slows down conduction through the heart. It decreases automaticity. It's not as effective as amiodarone, though. And really, no study has shown that lidocaine or amiodarone improve survival to discharge from the hospital, but we give it nonetheless. Uh, another thing that I remember with lidocaine is that if you give too much of it, it has toxicity. Things such as uh, decreasing the blood pressure, myocardial depression, and seizures. So we have three milligram milligrams per kilogram is our limit at which we're going to start developing toxicity. So the dose here is one milligram per kilogram bolus, and if you need to give a drip, you could give 20 to 50 micrograms per kilo per minute per as a drip, but as we said, we are pretty much not going to use lidocaine. It's an older medication and it's been supplanted by amiodarone. The next medication that we're going to look at is magnesium. Now, magnesium is only indicated when you have documented hypomagnesemia, that is, low magnesium levels, and either a prolonged QT interval or the patient is in torsade. Uh, then you can give magnesium. And the dose of this is to give 20 to 50 milligrams per kg over 10 to 20 minutes. Now the reason that you give it slowly over 10 to 20 minutes is it can cause hypotension. And so you want to avoid that. Now of course if the patient is in torsad, this horrible dysrhythmia here, they will not have a blood pressure. And so you can give it faster because you can't get any lower than zero. And there's a max, and the max is 2 grams. The next medication that we're going to go visit is naloxone, and naloxone is an opiate antagonist. It, uh, it's usually not included in our ACLS as one of its kind of medications, but respiratory depression is one of its, uh, the main side effects of narcotic medications, and so that we know respiratory depression can cause a cardiac arrest in, pa in our pediatric patients. So if you have a patient in whom you are suspecting an opiate overdose, consider naloxone. And the dose is for kids that are less than five years of age or 20 kilograms give 0 0.1 milligram per kg and that will hopefully flood all their receptors and turn off all of the opiates so it's a full reversal in adults sometimes we don't want to give a full reversal dose because if we do then we're going to precipitate withdrawal especially in patients who are addicted to narcotics and in which case we would titrate it if that should happen in a child you can give one to five micrograms per kilogram and titrate to a to effect but usually you're going to be giving the full reversal dose the next medication we're going to talk about is procainamide now procainamide the way that it works is it prolongs the refractory period in the atria and the ventricles it also depresses con uh, conduction velocity. Now there's not a lot of data on the use of procainamide in infants and kids and so we're extrapolating from adults and so we know that the dose here is 15 milligrams per kilo over 30 to 60 minutes 
and we do it over a while because it can cause problems like heart block, uh, hypotension, and so we want to avoid that and give it slowly. And if, if those things develop, we might need to slow it further. In fact, we have specific criteria at which point we stop the infusion. And those are listed here. These are what we will use in adults. If the dysrhythmia stops, well then let's not give any more of this drug if we fix the problem because we know this drug has its problems. If we develop any of those problems like hypotension or a prolonged QT, then stop the drug. Or if you've reached your maximum dose, which is 17 milligrams per kilo. And another thing that you should keep in mind is that procainamide prolongs the QT and so does amiodarone. So giving those two drugs together can be potentially uh, troublesome. The next drug that we have is sodium bicarbonate, and that really is not recommended for cardiac arrest. There are only two real indications. That's for hyperkalemia or patients who have ingested some toxins that require um, al al alkalinizing things such as tricyclic antidepressants. Now the dose for this is one mil equivalent per kg. And the final drug we're going to talk about here is vasopressin. And you can see I've drawn an X through it because there's no evidence to suggest that we can make a recommendations for its use in children. Now, we do use it in adults. We use it for the first or second dose uh, as a vasopressor in, in, in adults with pulseless arrest. But there's not enough evidence to suggest its use in children. And in fact, there is some evidence saying that maybe it's not so great in adults either. I'll quote the paper for you. They say, a preponderance of controlled trials in adults do not demonstrate a benefit. So now with this, the conclusion of this video, we have gone through all of the drugs uh, that we're going to be using in ACLS. And so we're going to go through the protocols next. And I just wanted to thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.